All right, so let's do example number one from 2.5. So if I say 2.5, example number one, um, they give us a polynomial, so we're going to say f of x is equal to x minus 2i, so these are complex numbers, x uh, plus 2i, and it says write a polynomial function in the standard form, identify the zeros of the function and the x-intercepts. Okay. And so what we need to do then for part A is we, we can just, uh, the x-intercepts are kind of easy, right? So it's still done the same. The zeros would be, uh, and we call them zeros, so it's not technically like an x-intercept, it's called a zero. And remember that zeros are like solutions. So if this stuff is set equal to zero, then you've got to think in your mind um, that zero can come from zero times zero. In other words, this thing and this thing both have to be set equal to zero to make the whole thing equal to zero. So that justifies me doing this and this, okay? And so when I do those two things, let me zoom in a little bit here. When I do those two things, I get x is equal to 2i and x is equal to negative 2i. And so really that's it for that one. Those are the two zeros. Now, these zeros are not real, so these are not x-intercepts. And you might say, well, Mr. Adams, where does this come from? Well, this is a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation that doesn't factor nicely. In fact, if we were to plug this into the quadratic formula, the discriminant is negative, and we can't take the square root of a negative number. So I want to expand on this just a little bit outside of what the textbook asks from us. Uh, f of x, well, what is f of x? Well, let's multiply these out. If I say x plus 2i, right? times x minus 2i, what I end up with is x squared. Over here I have a positive 2ix and a negative 2ix. And then positive 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. So this becomes, the middle terms cancel, x squared minus 4i squared. But remember guys, that i squared is equal to what? negative 1. So I've got x squared minus 4 times negative 1. All right, so you guys remember that? i squared is equal to negative 1 because i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And so if you square both sides, you get this. So then what I have up here is a minus times a minus is a plus, so I have x squared plus 4. So the quadratic that we're graphing put your cell phone away. I'm trying not to say it on the video. Okay, we'll pay attention to the board. Um, what we have here is a quadratic that if I graph it It doesn't cross the x-axis. So if I come in here and I click on this and I go x squared x, oops, let's click here, x squared plus 4 and well if I factor it I'll get what well, we, it said it's not factorable, not with real numbers, but if I go and I select graph I can still graph it, right? So when I graph it, I get this, uh, let's slide down to the graph. I get a parabola that's shifted up four units, so this never technically crosses the x-axis. And so this is why it's what we call in a uh, complex solution, which is what 2.5 is all about. So does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Um, 
Does anybody have any questions on that? So now when we come back to this, what am I trying to say? Let's recap real quick. F of x equals this stuff because it's really, if I were to plug this into the quadratic formula, my discriminant would be negative 4. And I can't take the square root of negative 4, so I end up with this 2i plus or minus 2i stuff. Right? And so we have a graph that looks like this. that crosses at 4. So that's pretty much it. Let's do one more example from example number 1, which really should be called example number 2, but it's example number 1b. A little bit different. But I wanted to show you. Actually, I'm going to skip to C because C has everything. So if I look at C, so this is still example number 1, part C. They've given us f of x is equal to x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus i times x plus i. Well, if you multiply them through, and I'm going to do that because I want to graph this thing. Now, I know that this is going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. I know that. But we're going to, we're going to expand it just so you guys see. Like, like, there's a pattern, right? Like, if I said a plus b squared, that's going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You guys have memorized that in Algebra 2, right? But let's assume you can't remember on the ECT. We'll just multiply it out. Oops, getting ahead of myself. 3x minus 3x plus 9. Combine like terms, negative 3x and negative 3x gives me x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now I suppose I could uh, maybe multiply these two. So if I say x minus i times the quantity uh, x plus i, I get x squared negative ix positive ix, and then negative i squared. Well, these cancel in the middle, which is no accident, and I get x squared minus i squared, but we know that i squared is the same as negative 1. So when I minus minus 1, I get x squared plus 1. Well, now I just got to multiply those two quadratics. So I'm going to get a fresh sheet of paper here. And I'm going to say x squared minus 6x plus 9 times the quantity x squared plus 1. So I get x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 9x squared. And then I get x squared minus 6x um, plus 9. Wait a minute. Okay. I just want to double check something because normally we have the diagonals that are like terms. So let's double check. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. Negative 6X times X squared is negative 6X cubed. Uh, oh, that's 9X squared. Caught one mistake. Now this will be x squared, well this will just be the same thing because we're multiplying by 1. So Mr. Adams did kind of make a mistake. This combines with this. All right. So this becomes x to the fourth minus 6x cubed. Um, isn't that 10x squared? Minus 6x plus 9. So all this stuff here is going to be x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 10x minus uh, 10x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now, by looking at this, if I go back to the factor, prime factorization, what are my zeros? Well, my zeros occur when each factor is set equal to zero, so I'm going to do that in a different color. 
because this is what they asked us to do. They asked us to find the zeros. Well, the zeros are uh, when x minus 3 equals 0. When x minus 3 equals 0, which will be the same thing. And then when x minus i equals 0 and when x plus i equals 0. Okay? So this is going to be x equals 3, multiplicity 2, right? Okay, that's for both of them. And then this is going to be x equals i and x equals negative i. So now this is multiplicity 2, right? So this, this occurs twice. So I have a fourth degree polynomial, which means I should have, um, I should have, um, four solutions. So I've got two solutions of three, and then I have two complex solutions. Now, does anybody remember a couple sections ago, we said that when you have a mul an even multiplicity, does anybody remember what that graph looked like? This is going to touch the x-axis, but it probably won't cross. If it was an odd multiplicity, it would cross through the x-axis. So now, we know that a quadratic is, per, is a parabolic function and that a quartic, a fourth degree polynomial, kind of looks like a quadratic. It kind of looks like this stuff. So if I were to graph this thing, it's probably going to go like this. You know, it'll be crazy or something like that. I don't know what it will be. But it'll probably touch down like at x equals 3. I'm not sure yet. I haven't graphed it yet. But I know all that based on the information they've given us. So what would you like to do? Well, let's graph it. So we're going to go to Mr. Adams' uh, little graphing thing here. Click on the graphing calculator. And we're going to plug in our equation, which is um, x to the fourth. not cooperating with me today. x to the fourth plus, no wait, minus 6x to the third, plus, oops, no, plus 10x squared, minus 6x, plus 9. Now this one says find the roots and using the rational roots test and all that stuff, um, we could do that. You want to try it and see what the answer is? Hey, isn't that what we got? Okay, let's graph it now and see what it looks like. So if I hit answer, um, we got to scroll down to look at the graph. It's pretty much kind of what Mr. Adams said, right? That's how it should look. So that's what a graph looks like when it doesn't have real solutions. See, at a 3, it touches down. It's a multiplicity, an even multiplicity. So it's going to touch at 3, but not necessarily cross. And these little humps here, these humps right here are the other solutions, or the zeros. They just don't cross the x-axis. Does that make sense? Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? Okay, good.